Hello, trans surfers and the trans surfing curious. This is Renee Garcia and Xavier Watercane on part two of our reality transplaining, uh, the induced transition. So last episode, it was a doozy. We broke down what an induced transition is. Um, and some of the traps that we can kind of fall into as adults, getting ourselves into sticky situations where we're not necessarily willing to accept accountability. I know that's a, that's a, that's a big one for a lot of us. And today we're actually going to now sort of transurf this conversation into a higher and better direction and talk about a few things, one of them being actual steps that you can take to get out of an induced transition, either something that's going on internally within you, you're getting triggered, you're encountering, you know, regular parts of your reality that you don't like, maybe toxic family members, a job you don't like, um, self-care levels low, all that, and you're going into sort of some typical induced spaces and how you can evolve out of that pattern. And then what I really want to talk about in this, in this episode today is the kind of, um, the anomaly, the, the, the environmental induced transition that, I feel is happening globally. I think that it's happening to certain people in the world a lot worse than others, but this is stuff that has to do with lockdown and people feeling as though their freedoms are being um, restricted and how people are responding to that in not a very trans-serving way, first of all, and then also looking to trans surfing to perform some kind of function that I don't believe that's what trans surfing is even about, right? We're not using trans surfing to try to alter the landscape of our reality. We're using trans surfing to alter the landscape of our internal reality. So our relationship with the external doesn't bother us as much you know the battles sure. sure there's there's that but there's also the promise the implied promise that we can actually then trans from that space then move into a better reality for those of us watching or for those of you whatever uh we went into a lot of explanation about just the nitty-gritty of induced transitions in the last episode so if you haven't watched that already it's i don't know where does it's uh, it's down there it's down there isn't it? okay <laughs> so there's the link okay the link is there okay uh, okay so let's so <laughs> yeah so let's talk about so let's talk about let's talk about environment because in the last episode we looked at uh, person to person induced transitions with particular mm -hmm. emphasis on family members, but we also looked at uh, re, um, transplaining our way out of a common misconception that we create our reality and just leave it at that without certain caveats being in place. So we're not going to go over that again. Go there. Right. So <laughs> let's get to the nitty gritty of this one, which is about in the bigger, wider world and induced transitions and how people are handling it and what we can do to get out of this induced transition that we find ourselves in. So what immediately comes to mind for me is evidence to support all theories, right? Yep. Evidence to support all theories. When, when the first lockdown happened and I was still living in California, I remember thinking to myself, oh, this is so weird. Like what a bizarre time to be alive and see something like this happening. I almost had kind of like, um, 
you know, I know this is going to sound twisted, but like when you watch like car accident YouTube videos of like cars getting into accidents and stuff, have you ever seen any of those? It's sick, oh, you yeah, know, yeah. but it's, but it's like really, well, I've it's watched, like. I've watched all of those Mondo movies where horrible things happen to people. Exactly. It was kind of like watching. Out of, out of curiosity. <laughs> yeah, it's, because... it's kind of like that. You're like watching it and you're like you're not necessarily connected, right? You're watching something and you're like, ooh, that's so weird and gross or bizarre or whatever. This is yeah, kind because, of how- because most, because most of us in our lives are shielded from that. We're shield, we, most of us living in the developed first world or the weird countries, W-E-I-R-D, which stands for Western Educated Industrial Rich democracies, which are actually uh, the minority of the countries in the world. Most of the countries in the world are not weird. They are not Western. They are not as highly educated as we are, although they can be. Uh, they're not necessarily as industrialized. They're certainly not as rich. And they're certainly not democracies. So, <laughs> so, so we, so we, the, we have really the opportunity weird. once in a while to kind of encounter yeah, to, to encounter horror, which is something because this is because this is something that I got out of the book that I've been working on that it's it's about it's getting closer and closer to getting published now, which is the one about um, the demonic possession and uh, the exorcism and deliverance process. Uh, out, or out soon on in all good bookstores and on Amazon. But what will but that ex, that that deep dive, that eighteen month deep dive into the nature of evil, showed me again that we've got it pretty good here. And even though it's not perfect, certainly in the United States, Canada, England, New Zealand, Western Europe, lots of Eastern Europe, we've got it really good. We do not so face horrors. We do not face horrors at the level of starving people starving to death in the street. No. Uh, we do not have people defecating in public, except in San Francisco for some reason. Um, we do not have people. Um, <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. It's so true. I'm not, we're not lying here. We're not lying yeah, here. Yeah, it's it is um, so true. <laughs> uh, there's the we don't we don't we are shielded even from positive things of life. How many of us have actually witnessed a birth that we weren't involved in? How many of us have seen a dead body outside of a funeral casket in a very sterile um, how, situation? How many of us have seen bits of people that have been blown off them and are now sitting in, in, in uh, buckets of uh, preservative for pathological investigation. Yeah. Right. It, see, well, I mean? so it, it, in, in How here's, this happen? Yeah, How this happen? I mean, it's, it, we're, it's almost like we're spoiled, right? We're spoiled yes. and then we, and then we, and then we, yeah. And then we encounter something, some anomaly and like some freedoms being taken away. So, so, so some, somebody said on the Facebook group today, it was one of the Australians and we're getting lots of these in the Facebook group. Australians are up in arms about all the restrictions. Yes, and because this, we're not used to them. Not, not used, used to them. them. And this, we're, this, not used to, we're not used to being told what to do. We're not being. We're not being. We're not accustomed to uh, having our government impose things on us to this extent. This is some. This is a completely new experience. For the majority of native-born Australians, or, or oh, I can imagine. Up here, I can, that, that I, I can, I, I can absolutely, I can absolutely imagine because I can see it from speaking as speaking as an immigrant who came to this to Australia when he was three, well, almost three. I can, t and having grown up with peer, one with my a mother in particular who grew up in an oppressive fascist dictatorship, as was Argentina when she was growing up and her telling me stories about what, what life was there and why she had to get out. Having, having had a father who was a teenager in World War II, who was in occupied Belgium at the time, and on one night, the Nazis were grabbing people randomly and putting them in detention. Yeah. 
that, that, that was one of their the tools of oppression. Basically, they said, if there's any trouble, we will shoot everybody that we've got incarcerated. So you can imagine what that did to my father as a teenager, being put in jail overnight, not knowing whether he would survive till the next morning. Oh, Can you imagine what it would have done to my grandparents, wondering whether their, uh, their only son, because he oh, was the only son. Gosh. Right? The others were all daughters. The only son who had survived because my grandmother gave birth to her first child stillborn. He was born with the, um, the umbilical cord uh, tied around his neck. Unfortunately, that used to happen, and he basically strangled at birth. Then came my father. Then came his little brother, who died at the age of six months from cerebral meningitis. That level of infant mortality does oh. not exist <laughs> in know. weird countries anymore. Sure, oh. infants do die, but not. My father would tell me there were day, there were times when he was twelve years old when he would go into school and that there would be a particularly bad bout of whatever. And this is in the days before antibiotics. Yeah. And there would be a couple of people that were no longer there because they had died. Yeah. Oh, totally, right? and, totally and then, different. And then, and then he, and then as, and then he's put into jail overnight by fascist mad people. And then yeah. at some point, I don't, I never got the story about how he did it. He managed to stow away on a ship that was crossing the channel and ended up as a teenager having escaped Nazi occupied Belgium and staying with his relatives in London. Wow. How many teenagers have to deal with that crap? Yeah. Right? And, and yes, he grew up to be a very, very troubled, very traumatized person who yeah. passed on some of that trauma to his children. But hey, as an, looking back, I, I would probably have had issues too if I'd had yeah. those sorts of experiences, right? For whatever reason, there, yeah. there's, there's a tra there's a transurfing explanation for all that, but we're not going to go into that right now. Right now, we're going to go through the fact that in the weird countries, yeah. we're not used to, to, to restrictions on our civil liberties for the greater good, Yes. whatever that might mean. As an Australian, having lived here, for almost the entire term of my natural life, I can tell you that it's polarised our community. Oh, such I can as imagine. It right? As it is polarised the Americans. Oh, totally. It's, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's part of the reason why I moved because I was just... It, so this is it. This is, it brings me right to the conversation at hand. And... You know, it is truly about one, your perspective, and two, how accountable do you want to make yourself for tolerating? Or if you, if you absolutely can't find a way to, to exist within your current set of circumstances, are you willing to get off the bus and do something else? Or do you want to transurf a way to figure something at out? Least, at the very least, a place of neutrality. A place of neutrality, <laughs> exactly. Because, because, well, you've dropped importance on the whole thing. You always go on about trap dropped importance. Every, I mean, practically every time you talk, there's going to be some level where Rene Garcia is going to be talking about dropping importance, dropping importance. And that's because for, in terms of Rene Garcia's personal history, she has often been confronted personally through her own personality with places where she has created way too much significance or importance Oh. around a particular issue and that's completely sucked her in and sucked her dry and confused her and queen of importance transition into all queen sorts of, of induced places. transition queen of induced right. transition queen, queen induced of importance transition. queen of excess potential exactly. queen of excess potential i personally i personally do not have that great an emphasis on dropping importance in my own life 
Certainly not to the extent that I'm going to have it tattooed on my body in Russian. Because oh, yeah, I forgot not, the tattoo too. Yeah, I forgot <laughs> that. But we, we look at it constantly and we're thinking, gee, she really needed to remind herself constantly of that, didn't she? Yeah, it was that bad. <laughs> it, was, it was that bad. It was that, it was that bad. To the point so, where you actually <laughs> tattoo an anchor to your physical body to constantly remind <laughs> you about having to do something because doing it internally isn't working for you. You're just going to have to plaster on yourself <laughs> as a billboard for the rest of your life. So that yes. you'll say, because it's going to be your tendency. And that's your trick. My yes. personal, I personally do not, I find anything I have the opposite problem. I have created in myself a state of being where I actually sometimes have to elevate importance. Oh, got I actually it. Have to, yeah, I actually have to, I actually have to, get enthusiastic about something in order to make it happen by yourself, which is why the re reality trans questioning technique is so helpful for me because it gets to put me in that state. I think it's interesting that we're very opposite in this, you and I. You and probably half the people, the millions of people watching this are in the Renee camp of you overdo the importance yeah, and therefore you've got to tone it down. Whereas the other half are like on, in Camp Xavier, where we tend to underplay things and we actually need to build ourselves up so that there's yeah. enough energy for us to move. So let's Which talk just about... Goes to yeah. show. It just yeah. goes to show. You can choose your own reality, right? You can, exactly. you, yeah. So let's talk about, let's talk about the people that are... And, and I, you know, I hate to use people in the group as an example. It kind of sucks, but there's a number of them now that are all ringing the same bell. How do I deal with freedoms and liberties taken away um, from with trans surfing? And I've been asked this question many, 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 many times in this what's particular your way. Answer, Renee? What's your answer, Renee? Well, Give my answer. answer <laughs> My, my answer is that's not what reality transurfing's for. Reality, what people are asking me is how do I make the circumstances in my reality bend to my will? I don't want there to be freedom restrictions anymore. How do I stop those from happening using reality transferring? How do I transfer myself to a reality where the presence of those circumstances no longer exist? And from my layer of reality, you can do that in one way and one way only, and that is leave that environment. Pack up your bags, pack up boxes, get a shipping container and go to another country. Or, <laughs> or, if you can't do that, then you transurf the situation. And what transurfing actually is for me, which is, by the way, what I decided to do when I didn't like the circumstances in California, you know what I did? I packed my fucking house up and I put my house on the market and I moved, right? Instead of complaining about the way that California was, I opted out. I opted out. Now, I didn't need to opt out. I could have continued to transurf the situation also, which is what I did for the entire year or 14 months before that. And that was at the onset of all the funny stuff, the lockdowns, the, the, the toilet paper you know, thing when you couldn't get any toilet paper, which was quite bizarre, and all those sorts of things, I looked at it from an, from an objective perspective. Wow, look at this garish display of societal <laughs> weird, you know, like I was, I was, <laughs> I just, I just stood there kind of mesmerized for a moment watching transfixed thinking, oh, this is bizarre. And then I stopped myself and I was like, wait a second, don't get sucked in. This is your opportunity. And you know what I did? I went into my laundry room for almost an entire year and I filmed like 750 videos for Transurfing TV. I made courses. 
I created characters. I wrote all kinds of things about trans surfing. I built strategic things behind the scenes. I got busy because I knew that I had really three options. I was either going to get sucked in and I was going to lose myself and I was going to become pendulum food, right? Which is what a lot of people are still doing. My other option was to leave and go somewhere else, which I ended up taking later. Or my third option was to go into creator's mode and create myself a nice little layer of reality where COVID and restrictions and all of this stuff simply didn't exist because I was too busy doing something else to even give a damn, you know? And that's what I chose to do. I love that term pendulum food. I'm going to start adding that to that phrase to my reality. Huh? Vortex One. fodder, vortex yes. fodder, pendulum food, because yes. it's exactly what, it, what you become. You become a contributing factor. While I agree with almost everything you said, I would add a couple of things to that. One, I think they're asking the wrong question because the question is all is, what do I do about this? Yeah. It's not in transurfing to get you to do anything about anything. And I know that sounds really strange, but hear me out, millions of people watching. The minute that you put your, the minute that you put your attention on something and you see it in those terms as something to be fought against, you are going to play the role of the fighter against that thing. That thing will then respond by fighting back. Right? You will suddenly find yourself involved in that pendulum vortex. And before you know it, you're actually a player and you're feeding that whole process, that whole mechanism. Okay? So think about it another way. Ask yourself, instead of seeing things in terms of this is a violation of my, my, my liberties, focus on other things like you did. Create a completely different activity or attention where the where the civil liberties are just become irrelevant. From that point of neutrality, you can then do some really advanced trailing. And this is a but this is probably this is a very advanced thing that you can do, is that you start envisaging the timeline in which we're no longer experiencing this sort of thing. That might take a while, or it might take seconds. But very, very advanced transurfing would mean that you would fall asleep in one reality and wake up in another one. Now, that's extremely, so far in my experience, in this current timeline, that's very rare. Although there are examples of it on record where people just vanish from this reality. They yes. don't die, they just vanish. The probability of that is low though. It's, it's pretty low from my perspective because of my reality con construct. However, because I haven't worked on that area of yet, I'm still working on other areas before I go there. But there are also the reverse has happened where people have woken up and they say, where's my boyfriend? where's my girlfriend, and they're not there, and then they look around and that person doesn't exist in this timeline, and they go to work. There's a great story I've been hearing about. This woman, it actually happened to her. She wakes up in her bed, the sheets are different. She doesn't know why, but she's in her flat. She says, maybe I just got confused. She wakes up, her boyfriend isn't there. She calls him up, the number doesn't work. She... Uh, starts calling, uh, she starts calling around, nobody's heard of, what are you talking about? She goes to work, she goes to work and she finds that she doesn't even work in that department of that company anymore. She's been working 20 years in that company. That, that department, she doesn't work, she works in another one. The boss that she thought she had isn't there. She continues to look for her boyfriend, but her boyfriend simply doesn't exist. She's actually still in this timeline with her past boyfriend that she never broke up with. She thinks she's going completely insane. She, okay, then goes, she then seeks, then she seeks psychiatric help 
they do a bunch of battery of tests, they can't find anything organically wrong with her. So it's not a psychiatric condition so much as a psychological one, they think, but they can't explain it. Transurfing can explain it. This woman from another timeline, for some reason, accidentally flipped out of that timeline and into ours. Ooh. Right? That's very advanced accidental transurfing. Yes. There's another story about there's another story about a university professor saying hello to saying goodbye at the end of the day to a bunch of students. He goes into his car. A lot of people witness this and they turn their, 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 their heads for a moment, then the next minute they look, he's not in the car. They look in the car, he's not there. Nobody saw him get out of the car. He simply vanished from reality. Hmm. From a trans perspective, that's movement from our time, this timeline, or this stream of timelines into another timeline. It's the same we like the story know. of the train in the Transurfing book where the people from Italy showed up in like South America somewhere 50 years later saying yeah. that they were on a train somewhere and the train had disappeared and yeah exactly so, exactly. so it can't it, it can it can be done if you it, it can be done but there but there's a there's a easier much easier way <laughs> there is a much easier way of doing it but there is a much easier way of doing it I mean the, the, I mean these people either because of some glitch in the matrix or because of it, because they because of their spiritual agenda, part of the spiritual agenda was to experience this more extreme form of transurfing, which is theoretically possible. And there is some evidence, there is evidence to support that theory. It does happen. It's unlikely to, from our perspective. But that's only because it's from our perspective. Like I said, if I if I develop enough one day I might just vanish from this reality or you might vanish from this reality. So do you yeah, think this is, that do you think this is what people are asking when they say, how do I transurf out of a country? Maybe was... maybe some of them maybe some of them are. But the point that I'm but I but we've had we had this conversation in way long ago. I'll just we'll just reiterate it here because people might not have heard that conversation. The fact of the matter is that reality is like an infinite number of movies happening simultaneously. We are only experiencing one movie in any given instant, but the point is that we might be shifting along very close parallels constantly. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right? So in this, but say, but the frame rate of the universe is tiny. The frame rate of the universe is the Planck second, which is the smallest discernible physic, according to current physical theory, the smallest possible unit of time that makes any sense. Now, the Planck, the Planck frame, because a movie runs at 24 frames a second, right? Mm -hmm. In some of the more advanced movies, like the IMAX, it runs at 72 frames a second. Because that's enough, 72 frames a second is enough to give us the illusion of motion. And in fact, the reason that my hand is blurry now is because the frame rate of refresh on this computer isn't fast enough to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. And our eyes might see it a little bit clearer, but not much more because the frame rate of our minds is about 72 frames a second as well. That's in normal human consciousness, but that's about as much as it is. Now, the Planck second is so small. Do you know, okay, give you an idea. How many seconds do you think has happened since the Big Bang? In the 13.8 billion years since the Big Bang, how many seconds do you think have elapsed? Mm, one trillion to the power of one trillion. No, it's actually smaller than that. Surprisingly really? small. Surprisingly small. If you do the calculation, I did the calculation a couple of days ago because I was curious in the question with the question. It was it was about a billion billion, about 14 billion billion, but I could be wrong. Anybody out there who wants to do the calculation, just type in Google, how many seconds have elapsed since the Big Bang? And it'll tell you. Wow. Anyway, however big that number is, it's like one quintillionth, quintillionth, quintillionth of the number of Planck seconds in an ordinary second. We have no, every second that passes, 
there have been more there are more playing seconds pass than billions and billions of time the number of real seconds have happened in the universe since it was born 13.8 billion years ago. That's how small the frame rate of the universe is. Way, way beyond hu ordinary human consciousness. I'm scared. Right? It's extraordinary because people bandy around like, oh, the infinite space of variations, the infinity of it all. You don't, the mass majority of people who talk about eternity and infinity don't have a clue of what <laughs> infinity actually looks like. It's huge, it's vast. The number of films in the film library of the omniverse, the multi multiverse, is vast. It's enormous. I like right when you go now. into this mode. What? Right I like now, when you go into this mode. I'm really okay, I'm really embrace it. Right now, <laughs> right now, you and I and every all of the millions of people watching this are, are, chat, are just careening through trillions of universes constantly but they're coming so fast and because they're all within the same narrow range of timelines we experience it as a continuity but nothing could be further than the truth it's just a very persistent illusion but if you are highly developed in your trans surfing practice you can start shifting sideways in time more and more and more and more you so can actually to if you're away. What? How? What? How? This is the key. And this goes back to the whole induced transition thing. An induced transition happens when we look at the outside world and we allow it. It, it invites us into a particular state of being and therefore, and we respond by saying yes to it. Right? So the, 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 the outside world is saying COVID, COVID, lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. And we say yes. Mm -hmm. we'd even say yes when we say no to it because the minute we pay attention to it we're saying yes it becomes a, it becomes the focus of our attention the focus it becomes the focus of attention it becomes a, a vortex pendulum that we start swinging to we and start the more you to and the more you and the more you hate it the more you're actually yes. saying yes yeah, you're actually giving it more energy right so all of a sudden People are swinging on their pendulums. Woo! Yeah, baby! Oh, COVID! Oh, nasty! Oh, having oh, civil liberties! Oh, restrictions! Oh, I'm getting jabbed! I don't want to be jabbed! I'm going to be filled with nanobots! Oh, no! Ah! Ah! 5G! 5G! Ah! Ah! Right? Oh, my it's God. Crazy. We're going to take a clip of that, and we're going to actually turn it into an ad for Transurfing yeah, TV yeah. and run, run ads on YouTube. <laughs> Ah, ah, induced transition. Ah, 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 jabbed needles. Ah, ah, antibodies. Ah, 5G. Ah, Bill Gates conspiracy theory. Ah, ah. It just, it just could go on and on and on, right? That's well, it. <laughs> all you've done is you've said yes to what it's been presenting and you've chosen to play the rule, the role of victim. You have chosen to play the role of the person who is going to fight against the great oppressor. Yeah. Right? And all you're going to do is continue to create more and more of that reality. You said once that there's a spiral up or there's a spiral down. There is no neutrality. And there is no neutrality because really you're either going to be going up or you're going to be going down or, you're, or, the, or the up down is going to be so slight but it's going to look like neutrality. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah, you're basically re you're basically recreating the same experience of reality over and over and over again. So they're asking the wrong question. The question they should be asking is, what state of being do I need to cultivate? Yes. What state of being do I need to cultivate so that I can? synchronize my inner intention, my inner consciousness with what the mirror is showing me, outer intention, outer consciousness. Boom, lay it down, Xavier. Yeah. How do I synchronize that within my, within my center frame? Right? Reality, center... transplain it to me. I'm going to translate it to you, baby, right? How do I do that? And then go into the fourth frame 
which is the higher power channeling your higher consciousness, your future self, your spirit guides, whatever the hell you want to call them, whatever the higher consciousness is for you, until you have this wonderful tripod, right, centered in you at an elevated consciousness. And at that elevated state, you will start having thoughts that were impossible to have in your earlier state of induced Love transition. It. This Love is it. how you get out of it, right? It's not, in transferring, people often talk about, oh, inner in outer intention is so much superior to inner intention. Rubbish. Both have a contribution to your overall state of being. Transurfing mastery, as I wrote in one of the comments of one of your videos recently, is about understanding the subtle interconnected play between your inner intention, your inner frame of consciousness, what the mirror is showing you, the outer frame of consciousness, outer intention. The, re the key word here is intention, intention, because consciousness intends. And you are not intends, right? It's an intention, right? It's not about being, it's all consciousness intends because it has a it has a reason for being and a reason for continuing the the fundamental impetus of the omniverse is consciousness intending its next phase of evolution right so as an individuated consciousness i negotiate with other consciousness my inner world my inner mirror the outer world, the outer mirror, right? And then I look at that from, a, from the image reality point of view, and then I channel higher forces, higher dimensions that would exist beyond this material one and an ordinary consciousness. I flip my consciousness to a higher level of operation. That's the from only thing that, you can do. That's the only that's thing the you only, can do. And it's the only thing you ever do. This is the thing. It's the only thing you ever do because it is the only thing you can do. Whatever else other explanations there are to the universe and why you have the reality that you have and why you have the experience of reality you have, it all boils down to the same thing. Who you are in that moment, your present state of consciousness in that moment, where you are at in that moment will determine your experience of reality. So you then flip yourself to a higher level of consciousness and all of a sudden your perspective changes. Suddenly information comes to you from the mirror world that it otherwise was probably trying to tell you in the first place and wasn't able to, to, to you weren't able to hear it before because you weren't in that state of consciousness. To give you a really banal example, I was once in a situation, am I rattling on too long? No, or, no, or, but we, we, we should wrap it up soon. But I definitely okay. want to hear, I definitely want to hear a practical, I want to hear okay. a practical breakdown of what it is you're talking about. Okay, fine. So practical. Okay, so very quickly, I was in a situation once where I was in a meeting and somebody started talking at me randomly, a, 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 a mature lady, and she was saying, I've got this problem with the Department of Social Security, Centrelink, whatever it was called back then, and blah, 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 I'm having all this problem. And I was telling her, I don't care. I said, I really, I really didn't care. I wasn't feeling empathetic in that moment. Normally, I might have said I was sorry, but I was like, sorry, I really don't care. And she said, I oh, know, but listen, blah 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 blah. And I'm saying to her, no, no, you don't understand. I don't care about your problem. I don't want to solve your problem. I don't care about your problem. And she said, no, 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 but listen, blah 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 blah. Her state of being was so strong in seeking a solution that she couldn't hear my saying no to her. She just was powering and through. in the end, I gave in to the influence. I said, this woman is just not going to go away. She's just not going to take no for an answer. So I said, stop right there. I know what your problem is because I've been hearing from it for the past five minutes. You're going to do this, 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 and this. And she looked at me and said, thank you. That's what I needed to know. She intuited that I had the answer to her problem. My refusal to answer her problem collapsed in the face of her absolute need in that motion, creating that very strong pendulum, that very strong vortex for the answer. Yeah, and the the end, what it was. Why, why would she choose me out of everybody else in that auditorium to talk to? 
because you had the solution. There were dozens. I had the solution. She was operating at a higher level. I had I had to give in as a service to humanity just to shut her up. And also because at, by that point, she took my empathy. And I said, okay, fine. I know the answer to this. All you need to do is this, 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 this. Oh, yes. No, I'm sorry that nobody told you about how that system worked or how what you had to do there. Oh, oh, great. And she left and she was happy. And I was happy too because I've done a good service. And the problem... Well, and the problem ceased to exist after that. The problem ceased to exist. Okay, fine. So what she was, she worked herself up, like most people do, unconsciously transurfing her way to a higher state of consciousness where she was reset, where she was not going to take no for an answer. She was going to get the answer from the universe somehow. And she packed the one person in the room who was able to answer her question. Amazing. Because that was where she was. And she... Some part of her vibrated at that level, and I was reluctantly being called. Yeah. But no. And then she got her answer. It's the same thing with all these people dealing with the COVIDity or any other problem. It's the same problem. It's always the same issue. And the answer is always the same. Alter your state of consciousness, align your inner and outer and higher intentions, go into that fourth frame, Think at a high, you start thinking, feeling, and experiencing at a high level. All of a sudden, answers that were staring you at the face, suddenly you can see them. You weren't able to see them because you couldn't get there from there. But you're now here, not there. So now you're here at a higher vantage point. Oh, right. In your case, it meant moving to wherever, right? In yes. somebody else's case, it might just mean, you know what? I'm sick of fighting. I'm just going to get the jab. It's not that big a deal. Yeah. In some cases, it's like, I'm going to work around these restrictions. I'm going to find creative ways of, of obeying the law and sticking to the rules while doing the hell whatever I want. Yeah. In another case, it might be, I am simply going to accept everything and not worry about it anymore. Right? Yeah. There are, all these possible ways. there are lots of options. There are techniques that what I suggest you do is you read reality transurfing again, read the Tufti stuff, read whatever you like from any of the reality awakening modalities and take whatever tool you like. If we want to explore a tool for that, like the, the, the what we're promoting at the moment, the reality trans-questioning tool, yes. can, you, can use, you can use that. You can say, for example... And this could be like a meditation or a trans questioning on empowerment. Why am I so empowered? Why can I do, why is it that I can do whatever the hell that I want? How is I'm it that so I am so powerful? How is it that I'm so free? How is it that everything I do results in a really great outcome, outcome for myself? How is it that I can bend reality to my will? Or how is it that I can transfer my way into a reality that I'm comfortable with? How is it, why is it that I am so good at growing into a space where I'm comfortable in my, in my own skin and in my reality? We can there do that. That's more, that's, more, that's more homework for you. You can do another one of those reality trans-questioning things. Or Ooh, you can do... That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 you can call it the cure for COVID. Watch it get 50 million, just got, watch with a title like that, get a 50 million views, as long as we have a caveat. This is one way of dealing with it from a psychological and transurfing point of view. I'm that will solve. That, that should, that's the transurfing way Soul. of dealing with it. Soul. It's always the same answer. That. Love it. Love it. Okay, so let's wrap this one up. I think we nailed it. I think yes. we, I think we dropped it like it's hot, and we we transplained that. Yes. We we did. We just transplained it, didn't we? Yeah, that's it. That's all. That's all we did. <laughs> that and, was kind of it. And, and if people need to hear that a thousand times, twenty thousand times, well. We're going to be doing more of this stuff and you can hear the same stuff over and over again until you finally get it, until it finally clicks. And even when yep. it clicks, Renee and I will both admit 
that we're not always perfect at this. All we're ever trying to do is get a better bat bat batting average. That's all we're ever trying to do. Before we were doing this, whether we're doing whether Renee was doing it as a trans surfer or wh whether I was doing it, doing whatever the hell I used to do, can't even remember now. <laughs> we're, here, we're here now, consciously understanding a, that that's what we need to do, and consciously. We're here. Okay, here's an, here's another great question. You can just chant this yourself as a mantra. How is it that I'm so good at finding really good, powerful techniques to alter my state of being to Whoa, a higher level? There it is. There it Boom. is. Do that over and over again. Go back to the. Go back to the. Or, or go onto any of the reality trans questioning videos that Renee is creating, and and just use that that technique as one possible technique. Or go back to more traditional trans surfing techniques that don't exist. Uh, that, like that drop exist importance. The, yeah, like the drop importance, right? Like just like there's lots of there's lots of there's lots of, of, there's a, there's lots of stuff. Or do or do frailing or whatever. The descriptions are there. Do whatever works for you. But all of these techniques, all of these tools are just to get you to get into that wonderful place, right? That wonderful place where everything where you've moved to a higher level of consciousness so that you can then intuit your way out of the current reality that you're in, transfer your way into another time stream in which your real your experience of reality is different because you are different, because you have grown into it. Love it. I feel I feel more aligned just after this podcast. So thank you so I know, much, it's so, I know it's so miraculous, isn't it, Renee? It's just so miraculous. <laughs> it's so good. All right. Well, thank you so much, kind sir. And thank you, trans servers, for watching us again talk about things that we love to talk about. And I hope you will stay tuned to the next uh, trans serving video and join us on our next episode of reality transplanting have a good day everybody bye bye